well of a traveller who travelled from China to Europe before Marco Polo did it the other way around. Plus, of course, this week's painting, which I have no name for, and it's so long I can't even fit it in the copy. So anyway, who am I talking about? Well, his name was Ruban Ba Sauma, and he did, in fact, travel the entire length of the Silk Road, all the way from China to Western Europe, before Marco Polo. And yet he is relatively unknown. Well, who was he? He was born in Beijing, which had another name in those days, which I've forgotten. But uh, he was, in fact, a Mongol, born in the realm of Kublai Khan. And yes, he was the first person to travel all the way to Rome and Paris from China. He was a Nestorian Christian, and Nestorian Christians were, in fact, Christians who originated from the Roman and Byzantine regions of Europe, but basically had to leave those areas because they didn't agree with the Orthodox Catholic ideology. And so they went traveling, and they ended up in uh, such places as Persia and, I think, China. And so, therefore, they were very good travelers. And so, yes, this Ruba, Ruban Ba Sauma was, in fact, an historian Christian, and he grew up there, and he, then he decided to become a monk. So he became a monk in 1248, and he moved to the Fang Mountains in China to live a, a life of spiritual solitude with nature and with God, I guess. Um, He's soon bored of that, however, and his solitude was interrupted by a young man called Marcus who turned up and begged him to become his spiritual master. Marcus, this guy Marcus, became a monk himself and persuaded Saoma to travel to the Holy Land with him, which, of course, in those days was an enormous um, length of uh, miles away. So, yeah, basically in those days people travelled usually about half the length of the Silk Road going either direction and they usually then turned back. However, these guys were planning to do it all. So before leaving on their fine camels, they went and saw the Kublai Khan to request some letters giving them safe passage, which he indeed did give them. Why, in fact, he gave them to uh, these chaps is a bit of a mystery, considering he wasn't an historian Christian, of course, himself or anything. Perhaps uh, he wanted information that they could retrieve about the Mamluks in Egypt, which he was intending to wage war upon. Or they could have been sent as emissaries to the Christian world to show that the Kublai Khan was indeed tolerant of all religions. Anyway, they travelled on the Silk Road and reached Maragan in the spring of 1280 and met with the head of the Nestorian church called Ma Dena. So that was the equivalent of the Pope in the Catholic Church, who died not long after they uh, met him. And Marcus became the new leader of the entire Nestorian church, which today has people, um, I think it has about 175,000 people um, who worship in the Nestorian church in India, Persia, uh, Iran, I guess, and um, into China. Anyway, the Il Khan of Persia then needed help to repel the invading Golden Horde and the Mamluk allies. So, the um, two of them, this guy Marcus and um, our friend Ruban Barsauma, were given letters to deliver to the Pope and the kings of England and France to try and persuade them to help as allies against the Golden Horde and the Mamluk allies. 
So they set off to Europe. And they got to Europe. And they met with the kings of France. The king of France being Philip and Edward I of England. And they took the uh, letters also to the Pope in Rome. However, they weren't successful in um, getting their help because Europe was just too disunified and was not forthcoming to help them out. But anyway, I just thought it was rather interesting to think that someone travelled such a, an enormous distance in such an age in, this, in a, a very precarious region and um, before Marco Polo, and yet we hardly know anything of them. So there you go, that's this week's show. That's this week's painting, which I think you can name if you like. I'm not so into naming paintings. I'm more into painting them, really. But, um, yes, there you go. That's this week's painting. That's this week's show. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, subscribing, if you have recently. Comments and ratings. Keep it all up. And thanks a lot, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.